I've been mastering one of my songs using Master Plan 1.5 from Music Hack. I'm going to bypass the plugin for a moment so you can just hear the original track without any processing. By the way, this track was normalized to 0 dB, so it can't get any louder at the moment without the use of things like compression or limiting. Let's just have a quick listen to some of the chorus. Okay, so I'm going to switch off bypass, and yes, you are going to hear a difference in loudness. Not loudness wars loud, but it is going to compete better alongside other tracks on things like streaming services. But there's going to be some other important tonal differences as well. See if you can spot them as I play the track again. Now, apart from the loudness, you should have heard that the track had a little bit more presence to it. It was a bit airier and possibly had a little bit more punch and it was kind of glued together a little bit better as well. Don't believe me? Do you think you were being fooled by the loudness difference? Well, let's make use of this feature. The Unity feature makes sure the processed and unprocessed signal again match. We're going to start off by listening to the processed signal and then I will bypass it and listen Listen for the differences now. Please believe me, though you feel me, this is nothing new. Though we played it all these games, yet. So did you hear how the process signal just had a little bit more energy to it, a little bit more life to it, and when I bypassed it, it felt like all of that life was sucked out of the song. So I achieved that very, very quickly and easily using the few controls on this plugin. I'm going to dive in and show you in detail how I did that during this video. Hi folks, I'm Mike. And I hope you're well. I recommend you do at least some mastering to all of your tracks before you release them to the world. But let's face it, you don't always have the time or the budget for a mastering engineer for every single release. And besides, sometimes it's just for YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, etc. This is where Master Plan really comes into its own. It's simple and quick to use, and you definitely don't need like a mastering degree to get great results. Let's dive in and take a look. So I just want to quickly show you, if you click on the settings icon on the bottom right hand side, you can easily go in and change things to do with the look of the plugin. So for example, I can change the size here, I've got it set to large at the moment, or I could go in and change it from say a black to a white faceplate and a few other things in there as well. But I'm going to keep it to this look for the rest of the video. Human beings perceive loudness in terms of the average level of the signal rather than its peaks. And as you may have guessed, in this plugin, you increase the loudness by adjusting the loud knob right in the middle of the plugin. Now, while you're doing that, you may want to keep an eye on some of the meter readings at the bottom here. We've got Luff's I, Luff's Integrated, that is, which indicates an average level for us over a longer period of time. Then we've got Luff's Short, which is the same thing, but it's measure over, measured over a shorter period of time. And I also like to keep an eye on the crest value over here. This is the difference between the LUFS short and the peak value and gives us sort of an indication of the dynamic range of the music. And that will get smaller as we push the loudness up. So let's actually just play a piece of the music without adjusting the loudness. So we've got a sort of a baseline reading. <laughs> So 
So Luffs was sitting around about 14 for both integrated and short, and the crest value was sitting at around about 13 or 14 as well. So I want to get it up to around about sort of 10 in terms of Luffs. I'm going to keep an eye on the short value here because I'm only playing it for a short period of time, and also keep an eye on the crest value as well. So I've got my luffs to around about 10 or 11 and the crest value was up to around about 9, 10 and 11 as well. So that had indeed sort of shrunk in terms of the dynamic range there as well. So how loud do you want it to be? Well, it depends on a couple of things really. First of all, the genre of the music. Some genres of music like things to be sort of pumping loud all the way through. Others like the music to breathe in terms of dynamics. Examples of that would be say like classical music, maybe jazz or some acoustic music. The other thing that you want to be thinking of is the platform that you're releasing to. Sometimes they'll give you guidelines in terms of the luffs um, and it will really depend on that. So if you go to the settings, you can actually set some meter targets so you know when you're getting to the desired value. So I'm going to change this to I don't know, say 14 for the luffs, okay? When I close this and I play the music again Please be You'll notice here that the luffs values have changed red um, once we go over our targeted value. So that's just a quick, easy indication of whether we're reaching our target or not. The next thing I did was to use these EQ knobs over here just to adjust slightly the EQ curve of my piece of music. So using the low frequency knob, I just added a little bit of warmth to my track. Then using the high frequency knob, I just added a little bit of sort of airiness to this. I just did a minor adjustment, but it did make a nice difference. By the way, when you're using any of these controls, you can click on the label to bypass it momentarily. So you can really sort of clearly hear the difference as you've made adjustments. Now, new to this version is the mid control here. And we've got a choice between low mids, mid mids and high mids. I had changed this to the high mid function here and just pushed it up a little bit to add a little bit of sort of clarity to my piece of music. Now it's sometimes nice to add a little bit of stereo width to your track. Not always, but sometimes. And you do that in this plugin by adjusting the wide control that we can see here. Now I find this to be rather subtle in this plugin. So what I'm gonna do in order for you to hear it is push it all the way up to the max here. Then I'm gonna play the track and switch it off and on by clicking on its label here. Let's have a listen. Please be So you can hear it, especially in the higher frequencies, they just kind of get pushed out to the sides a little bit. With all of the controls at the bottom, not only can we switch them on, but also we get some fine control as well. So for example, the thickness control adds saturation. We can switch it on and we can adjust how much saturation with the slider below. The clean control next to it helps to remove muddiness from our mix. Then the multi control next to that engages a multi-band compressor. And when we switch that on, we can see these three bands here, low, mid and high. And we can control how much gain reduction we get by pushing these up. So they will appear to get quieter um, as we push these up. The smooth control next to that adds a little bit of gentle compression to our signal. And then the calm control next to that gets rid of some of the harshness that we might hear in the mids and the highs. And then finally, on the right, hand side we have our tape control which adds some tape emulation <laughs> on the right hand side of this plugin we have some really handy filters so for example if you want to know how your mix may sound on a phone then you can click on the new improved phone filter with this version of the plugin and have a listen to that <laughs> So 
It's really kind of low fidelity and really no low end at all. Also, you could try the N10 filter. This is kind of an emulation of the famous Yamaha NS10 monitors, which were known to be quite harsh, to be honest with you. Let's have a listen. Please believe me, though you feel me. And another thing you may want to make sure of is that your mix translates well into mono. So for that, you would click on the mono filter here. Let's have a listen to that. Please believe me, though you feel me. This is nothing. I really like the fact that this is still hands-on it's not sort of an ai generated master so you're still in control over the character of your sound but it does make the process a lot easier you don't have to dive into all the details of lots and lots of different plugins and it's really quick as well let me know what you think in the comments down below and don't forget to follow the link in the description down below for pricing there's a couple of different options there thank you so much for joining me today and i'll see you in the next video